Hello, my Likens. Welcome to Ant's Morning, my newsletter slash podcast. Hello. <laughs> this should be the September issue, but um, I couldn't send it on time. So it's the beginning of October edition. Hi. This one is titled Reluctantly Autumnal. Remember I mentioned not long ago Sylvia Magazine accepted a poem I wrote some time ago? Well, it's online now. Thank you, Millie Kitson, the editor, for choosing this bit to pull it out of my metaphorical drawer. Here you can read the whole thing if you go to sylviamagazine.com and look for Welcome in the Night. I originally wrote it in English, but there's also a Spanish translation and in the Spanish version of the podcast or in the Spanish half of the written issue. Okay, now let me read you the poem. Welcome in the Night. Embers against the night sky, pine tree wood burning up, furrows touched by cycle blood, a moon as big and full as the life that starts now. Barefoot over life coal, inhale the dark that falls upon fields empty, satiated. Now dance, now thank, now hum the song of love. Squeeze the sweetness from the crop. Kiss every stranger until they are not. Relish. Rejoice. This poem has been tumbling from one publication's inbox to another's for a year, until it found a place to stay on Sylvia, and it's weirdly satisfying to see it published now, just as the summer is reaching its end. And that's what I was thinking about when I wrote it. I don't know if I already told you, but I don't like the cold. And living in Valladolid, autumn and spring are a bit um, non-existent. So maybe what's changing my mood is the fact that winter is very close. As my grandma said, nueve meses de invierno y tres de infierno. Nine months of winter and three of hell. And the rest are just a few days that seem half summer, half winter, half chaos. I guess that's part of why I wanted to somehow mark this transition or maybe convince myself that the cold coming back was not so bad. That and that I wanted to send a submission to a magazine's open call about autumnal harvest and I was lacking one point to reach the minimum. Well. I'm chic like that. And one of the fruits that are harvested by the end of summer, beginning of autumn, is the grape. I've been drawing a bit, and if you go to the written version of the newsletter, you will see a drawing, a very small still life, of red globe grapes, or vitis vinifera red globe. In the color drawing you can see that the grape it's a bit purple, reddish, and it has some tinge of blue. And I took the artistic liberty of painting the shadow in silver, because why not? <laughs> and the tiny vine that comes out the grape is golden. Because why not? <laughs> okay, I was looking for information about this uh, specific grape, this um, species, and I found this website s.farm.tomatehouse.com slash vinograd slash red globe. And according to this site, the red globe grape 
has the species conservation world record. It's supposed to last for up to four months. I don't know how much this site is to be trusted, especially considering it then says the the illnesses and plagues that affect these grapes the most are mold and hatred. <laughs> Let's say it's a Google Translator senanigan because if not, what a drama! You can read the original Spanish quote, but now let me just read you the translation I did myself. Hatred infects the vine on the ground, gray or dirty brown stains appear on the upper part of the leaves, green sprouts. The berries stop growing and get dry, with a late injury they crack and rot. The grapes contamination with hatred by its characteristic smell that reminds of rotten fish. So now you know, don't go now and say something offensive about a grape in front of the grape because it will surely die. A piece of information that seems more accurate is this one I read in several other places. The Red Globe was created by H.P. Olmo and A. Koyama in Davis, California, in the beginning of the 60s. Yes, this grape was created. Statistics and trees on the table. I have some news, but before I share that, I'd like to put my statistics over the table. <clears throat> Let's see. Since March 2020, I have made 57 submissions to different publications, usually packets of 3 to 5 texts, and I also send out photographs, drawings, and paintings. I have received 12 acceptances, especially poems, but also illustrations, and remember the rest of the packet of texts or images were rejected. I have 5 submissions pending of answer. One of them has been like that since January 2020. And I'm not saying that to send the publication, just so you know that has been the longest waiting period, although it's not totally strange and the usual period is two to four months. And here's the final piece of information that I think will put everything into perspective. I have received 42 rejections. And that doesn't mean 41 of my pieces have been rejected, more like the double. And I'm not saying the triple because I've sent almost all of them to more than one publication. So let's say I got rejections for about 82 texts and pictures. This is not to make you pity me or anything, it's so you can have the whole picture of what it means every time I say one of my pieces is being published somewhere. Now, with the numbers on the table, Paranoid Tree recently sent me a letter of acceptance for a poem. We don't know when yet it will be published, because they plan the issues quite ahead, but it will be published. When I first checked their website, the first thing that caught my eye was this. We can't cure capitalism, but we can help artists survive. Okay, you already know, and if I haven't said it here, well, I say it now pretty pristine. I respect small literary journals that can't pay their contributors because they're volunteer run and because they help diversify literature. But I think it's also worth mentioning how some small pops pay the writers through readers, subscri subscriptions, and donations. And that's how Paranoid Tree works. Using the subscribers' money to print scenes and pay contributors. They also have a free access policy, so you can buy each individual scene or issue for three, five, ten dollars, or you can even download each issue on PDF for free. You just need to select zero as the quantity. Premature Spring 
offerings. Today I am closing the issue with a poem written by one of my friends in Neil Hilborn's writing circle. His name is Victor G. Juncal, lives in Turon, Asturias, also friends with Nayar. I told you about him a couple of times before, and has studied chemistry, writes poetry, and looks good in pink. You can read the original Spanish version of his poem Creación on the written version. Now I'm just gonna read to you the English term translation I did myself uh, and I hope I make it justice. Let's go. Creation. How would you create the world if you could? Look at yourself in the mirror, wear away the sidewalks, tell me then, which are your gods? What do we do? The answers prepare us to find questions we never even dreamed asked. You are, and every step is new, sometimes full of oblivion, unconscious, sometimes of unexpected solace. Yesterday, the hippocampi of chaos heralded desert. You can't foresee, for the most part, which role you will play in the other stories you take part in. Do you want to try? Who do you want to be? What would you want me to be? What would you expect? How do you appease the beasts? Do you even? Change the beginning, sketch the idea, imply the change. Memories or stake, there's no rest for that. When you look at the trees, the rain, the speedometer, the beer, what would you tell the world? What are you willing to offer to the spring? Ooh. Goosebumps! This is one of the poems in Ignagogias, published in 2018. And if you can read in Spanish, you should purchase it. You can do it via writing Victor a message to his Instagram account, that is azoto liquido, azoto with a seed. Azeta, <laughs> if you may. I hope my translation and reading makes the poem some justice. Uh, it's one of my favorites in the whole collection. I haven't talked with Victor about this, so keep in mind, I just pulled it from my sleeve. Although I think he'll like it because he's a big Michael and the fan. Uh, sorry, because I don't know how to say his name in German. <laughs> sorry, Victor, also, because I want to point out that the picture in the cover of his poem collection is... A screenshot of the chemical reaction called Belousov Sabotinsky reaction. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. I don't know how to pronounce those. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Um, all this discourse about creation of worlds made me think of the never-ending story and that part in which, and careful here with the spoilers because this is a massive spoiler if you haven't read the novel, Bastian is pushed into the dark and has to create a whole new world from scratch. And I remember reading that part and thinking that that new fantasy was more magical and colorful than the original. And overall, this poem Victor wrote maybe leaves us with an imperative of offering something to the spring, not in a meritocratic and business-like way, blech, but in the way of doing as the medallion says, do what you want. Not in the sense of doing whatever we like, but in the sense of creating what we want. Yes, let's say this is a metaphor about art creation. I'm sure no one else has read it that way. <laughs> Notice the sarcasm because um, 
there's even a discussion about this on the never ending story Wikipedia page. So I recommend Victor's poem collection and I know he's my friend, but I always say nobody pays me for doing the newsletter podcast, so I don't answer before anyone. So I, I so I can do whatever I like. Ibnagogias is asphalt gray, hope gray, is angry most of the time with good reason and makes you crave, despite everything, and I mean everything, not dying. That's all for now. Thank you for reading and or listening to me still. Or hi, if you just arrive. Hello. I'm enjoying having more time between issues so I can write them, record them, edit them and do the rest of stuff I do, living, writing and all that. Although if you know of a job position that's part-time, remote and compatible with what I already do, I'm listening. <laughs> if you'd like to receive a notification when I upload new episodes, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and write my name, my full name, Miriam Navarro Prieto. You can subscribe there and as YouTubers say, hit the bell. <laughs> and if you'd like and can afford to buy me a symbolic coffee, my coffee page is co with a K hyphen fee with an F dot com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. And you can go there in case you can throw something in the tip jar and I'll cherish it and use it to keep on doing the writing and the art and the living. See you next month or this month because I couldn't send this issue on time so expect to hear from me by the end of October. Yes, bye.